God isn't on the lookout for impressive people to add to his team. So who got the best grades, and who went to the best school, and who's got the best job, and who's raising their kids right, or at least who's screwing them up the least, right? Those people I want on my team. That's not how the gospel works. The book of Corinthians assures us that God looks out for the weak, the foolish, the despised, the end of chapter one, and says, that scrawny kid, that's who I want on my team. That's how the gospel works. God doesn't expect us to impress him. He comes to us in our weakness and lavishes us with grace. Now, most of us will have one of two responses to this. <laughs> For some of us, this is a challenge. For some of us, this gospel is a challenge. Why? Because you kind of like the idea that God has selected us as an elite group of special forces to take on the world, right? And frankly, you did get good grades, and you did go to a good school, and you do, do have a good career, and you're raising these kids right, or at least not screwing them up as much as some other people you know, right? And so you come here to the church, and church is it's part, it's part of your overall resume. And you know you, <clears throat> you need to do this. You need to be involved to, to some degree and, and in some manner. But basically, you're a good person. And, and that's, that's enough for God. God is pleased with you because you're doing your best. You're trying hard, and things could be a lot worse. Well, the gospel comes and says, no, <laughs> that's not who the gospel is for. The gospel is for those who know they're weak. The gospel is for those who know they're foolish. The gospel is for those who know that they're the despised of the world. The gospel is for those who know that they can't be saved by being good, but only be saved if God is good to them. In fact, we could go as far as to say this morning with um, heavy, heavy hearts, if you are depending upon your goodness in your relationship with God, you are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. You, you, you are not a believer. You have not been saved. And all that awaits for your goodness is a lost eternity in hell. The gospel comes and speaks a word of challenge until you realize that you live in a messed up city, until you realize that you're part of a messed up church, and until you realize that you yourself are as big a problem as anyone else here. You will not receive the grace of God in Christ. The grace that can alone save you. You'll stand before him in your own strength and your own goodness. And that's not how the gospel works. It's a challenge. Christian life begins with grace. For some of us, though, <laughs> for some of us, that's a big encouragement. A really big encouragement. Why? Because... Um, the rest of the world may think that you got good grades and went to a good school and kind of generally have your stuff together, but you know that you don't. You know, we know that we don't. We know the things that we've struggled with in our lives. We know some of the biggest shame and guilt that we carry um, over things done in our youth, over the divorce that we had, over the abortion that took place, over the pornography addiction. We can know ourselves better than the rest of the world knows us and know that we are weak, foolish, and despised. Well, this is a good day. Why? Because you are qualified for grace. Your resume is perfect. Perfectly imperfect. You stand as one who is likely to receive the grace of God because there is no sin, there is no shame, there is no guilt. There is nothing that you can do to outsin the grace of God. God is not all that impressed by your sin. He overwhelms it with his grace. 